Hey folks, I'm back with another book review, and in this video I will be reviewing uh, David Smirden's The Complete Chess Swindler. Uh, really interesting book all about swindling and kind of like the art of tricky defense. I felt like this book was actually really enjoyable to read. It was my uh, nightstand book for a few weeks. Uh, where I would just read it before bed every night. And yeah, I just found it very, very enjoyable to read, very pleasant, lots of really good examples. Uh, and actually the book turned out to be way more instructive than I originally thought. Uh, to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical at first because I've always felt like swindling, you know, kind of has two facets to it. Like number one is the tactical vision. You need to be able to see these like tactical tricks and ideas in order to possibly swindle someone. Um, but also a lot of it has to do with experience. And I've often felt like the stronger a player is, the more kind of time and effort and energy they expend at the board, you know, trying to save bad positions and putting up really stubborn resistance. So I've always thought that like swindling is just something that kind of comes with time. As you get better at chess, you get better tactically and you get better at, you know, using up more energy as the game goes on and looking for these like little uh, final resources. But what I didn't think was really possible that uh, Smerdin does a really good job of um, is kind of systematizing our view of swindles and actually showing that these things can be understood and they're very specific situations um, and uh, types of players and types of strategies can be used when you're in a bad position and trying to save it any last possible way. So the book does a great job of like explaining typical swindles um, and actually shows like common patterns and situations when it comes to swindling. It also talks about like different kinds of weaknesses that players show when they have a winning position. You know, some players are afraid to complicate matters. They want to stay completely in control. Other players kind of rush to finish the game quickly. Uh, without fully checking for their opponent's uh, resources and they can be kind of tricked in an unexpected way uh, and the book actually discusses how to best swindle you know each kind of player like first step is to understand your opponent and then the second step is to figure out kind of how to exploit their uh, psychology in, in some way so great great discussion of a lot of the psychological elements uh, in chess and uh, there's also actually a really fascinating chapter on, on gamesmanship with some incredible stories of players kind of tricking their opponents using things like you know body language and and stuff that definitely borders on uh, just being purely unethical if not fully immoral but uh some really really interesting stories and in, in how you know uh, players ended up uh, tricking their opponents and uh, i'll show some examples uh from the book uh one that i really liked because i remember watching this game live uh was this game between Grandmaster Sam Sevian and Timur Gurea from the U.S. Championship. And uh, I remember watching the live broadcast as they were looking at this position. And yeah, basically everyone was saying that Gureyev is uh, completely lost. Just strategically, his position is terrible. Bishop on d6 is awful. Triple pawns are awful. Uh, and the engine was also just showing, you know, like a decisive advantage here uh, for white. Um, but then he ends up tricking everybody <laughs> with his moves and he starts off with rook a4 Which uh, the commentators and, and myself included immediately thought it was wow Like what is he doing after a3 this rook is now just stuck just trapped on a4 and it feels like he's just let's say self uh, destructing um, then he goes rook to b3 and Sevian I think thinks for like about a minute here uh, plays the first move that I came up with rook d3 just like trade off this active rook and then black's rook on a4 is done and then i thought like okay then he's he's gonna resign and uh yeah it was the most incredible thing he plays rook to d3 and if i remember correctly the you know eval bar <laughs> drops down to 0, 0.00 and the commentators are so confused they're like you know this is game over completely winning like what what's going on uh, and then of course like everyone kind of realizes as timor is playing the move rook takes b2 actually just saves the game for for black just out of nowhere I mean, the point is rick takes b2 rick takes c4 check and if king f3 then e4 wins back the rook the position is completely opened up uh, black has won uh, a pawn or two and now is standing completely fine uh so totally like remarkable resource and honestly from the camera it wasn't clear whether uh Gureyev had had planned everything out or you know, if he just kind of uh, stumbled into this trick, but um, 
really, really like devious, devious trap, I, I think he set for, for Sevian. And uh, Sevian is of course incredibly strong Grandmaster, but it shows like even the world's best players uh, can get lulled into a false sense of security, thinking that the game is over, everything is done, and all of a sudden get hit with this kind of uh, lightning strike Rook takes B2. Uh, and then, okay, the game was uh, complicated, like he, he played F6 check here, and then after uh, King takes F6, he took on D6 with check, C takes D6, Rook takes B2, uh, but then black had a bunch of pawns for uh, the bishop and uh, eventually ended up actually drawing and, and saving the game. Um, so really like just, you know, remarkable what happened because strategically we could say that black was completely lost even before rook to a4 and, uh, you know, he ends up saving a half point against a really, really strong grandmaster. And so there's lots and lots of examples like this uh, in the book that personally I found just really, really interesting and, and instructive. Uh, of course, the book, I think, is going to do some job of like developing your tactical vision, but also showing you a lot of interesting nuances about the end game. Uh, there's a chapter on fortresses as well that I thought was very interesting and, you know, typical situations where you can save the game, uh, but by having less material. So overall, just very, very useful book, uh, front and back. And again, really well chosen examples. They're not too uh, detailed in terms of the annotations, but just there's a lot of examples packed in the book that I, I found really, uh, really interesting. Uh, and then towards the end of the book, he also has a collection of like instructive games. Uh, and then after that, uh, a chapter that I'm currently working through uh, with a bunch of exercises. There's about 100 exercises in the book where you can actually kind of practice coming up with swindle ideas and finding tricky ways to possibly uh, save half points uh, in, in bad positions. Uh, one that I liked, I, I'll just quickly um, put it up here. This position is uh, black to play and the, the prompt is just black to play and try to find a swindle. And yeah, as we look at this position, if you guys want, you can pause the video and, and think about it for yourselves uh, for a little bit. I, I would encourage that. Um, clearly black is in big trouble here because we're down two pawns and uh, white's rook is behind the a pawn, which is just going to be running very quickly. Um, but we do have at least one trick in the position and that is with the move rook to e2. So kind of fainting that we're going after the h2 pawn, but really what black wants is uh, after a5, uh, to play this tricky move, rook a2. And either white is losing the a pawn or they're having to capture on a2 and uh, putting us in, in stalemate. Uh, now it should be said, of course, after rook e2 that, that black is not saving the game. If white plays king c4 or king c5 here, uh, then white wins because on rook a2, uh, white can play king to b3 and, and there's no stalemate and uh, the a pawn is uh, promoting here. Um, so of course white is still winning with best play, but this is the whole point of swindling is just giving yourself the best possible chance to save the game. Now, how often are your opponents going to fall into these kinds of tricks like a5 rook a2? Uh, I would say in online blitz pretty frequently, in classical uh, less frequently. But even if you only save like one game out of 10 because you found some trick like this, you know, those points kind of add up over time. So I think it's very useful um, to kind of go through the exercises yourself and actually practice, you know, finding some of these um, some of these swindles. So um, yeah, overall, like I mentioned, really enjoyable book. I liked my time reading it very much, and I found it to be uh, quite instructive, like much more so than I, I kind of originally uh, expected. Um, but I think this book can actually teach a lot of players how to be, uh, you know, grittier in defense. Um, and also, I think this book is good for players who struggle with their own technique especially if you feel like you're blowing a lot of winning positions, either because your opponent, you know, comes up with some cunning traps or because you're not willing to calculate, you know, certain forced lines. Uh, I think seeing these examples might be useful for uh, kind of your own chess and your own development to see what it takes sometimes to actually, you know, finish a game cleanly. And sometimes it requires some really concrete calculation. Sometimes it requires being uh, super careful and precise about your opponent's counterplay. Um, but yeah, I think this is also a very useful book in terms of uh, working on your own technique. Uh, so who is this book for? I would say in terms of the level, I would probably recommend it for players rated around 1800 online and up. 
uh, a lot of the the tactics and the combinations presented in this book i think they would be very tough to find for players below that range so it might not be like the most uh practical material for players kind of below 1800 um, but overall, again, even if you're below that rating, I think you can definitely still get something out of the book, uh, especially if you feel like you fall into these categories where you're either not putting up as good resistance as you think you should be, or number two, you're blowing a lot of games because you're rushing and, and missing your opponent's ideas. I think the, the book can really help you kind of work on these problems um, as well. But yeah, in general, I would say advanced players are probably going to get more out of this book as they can... Um, really utilize a lot of the tactics and tactical ideas presented. I think it would be kind of more relevant because there are some really, you know, tricky combinations in here. It's not just like your simple run-of-the-mill tactics. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, highly recommended. Really love the book. Uh, very well written. So good job, David Smerdin. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this book review. If you want to see more of these, please let us know in the comment section and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We really do appreciate it. All right, hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Take care.